In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Olama, an open web UI on Windows Server, so that you can create a local AI chatbot server that you can integrate with Active Directory Security and Windows file shares. To start with, Olama is an open source project that allows you to run large language models locally. It's got a command line interface, which is fine if you're that way inclined, but most people want to interact with AI chatbots using a web interface. There is a wide catalogue of large language models available for Olama, including Microsoft's Phi and Meta's Llama. Some of these have performance that's comparable to recent generations of the flagship models. They aren't cutting edge, but they also don't come with a subscription fee. Olama has cross-platform support for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Most of the time you'll see it deployed on Linux and Mac, but because I'm intending to talk about how you can integrate it into your existing Windows Server environment, I'm going to do it that way. Open Web UI is a separate project that provides a web front end that is similar to those used by commercial LLM chatbots. So the aim is to create a web server that you can deploy on your local area network that people in your organization can interact with, like they would any other intranet site. There are other integrations for Olama that we'll get to in future videos, but this video is about the steps you can take to set it up. The drawback to hosting things locally is that you'll need to allocate hardware resources to it to get it to perform quickly. All the demos in this video are done in virtual machines on basic consumer hardware. It's fine for a proof of concept, but more serious deployments will require that you allocate more serious hardware to host the workload. There are also a lot of different ways to deploy Olama and Open Web UI on Windows Server, including Windows Subsystem for Linux and by using containers. Here I'm going a bit more old school and deploying this software directly without WSL or Docker. This video is showing you how to use open source tools on Windows Server and doesn't constitute an endorsement of the software or developers or statement of supportability of the resulting solution. I thought you might think it was cool and what you choose to do in the privacy of your own server room and data center is up to you. So let's start with the Windows Server instance. In this video, I'm using an evaluation version of Windows Server 2025 running in a virtual machine. I'm logged on with a local administrator account named Prime. Other than installed updates, everything is in a stock configuration. I open an elevated command prompt and run the command win get search anaconda. This allows me to locate the name of the package I want to install. Where possible, I prefer to use winget as that means someone else has done the hard work in packaging this all up. I run the command winget install anaconda.miniconda3 and the appropriate installation of miniconda installs. Next, I use winget to search for the olama package. Having found it, I install it with the command winget install olama.olama. After a few minutes, olama is now installed. If I wanted to, I could interact with it via the command line, but maybe I'll do that in a future video. To get Open Web UI installed, I've found the easiest way is to leverage an open source GitHub project that functions as an Open Web UI installer for Windows operating systems. When playing around with Open Web UI, I found getting a recipe to install the software reliably was a bit of a challenge. I found this open source tool, which has packed the installation routine up and put a bow on it, and it works as long as you have Miniconda installed. I've put the link for the releases of this GitHub project in the video description. 
At some point, someone will likely add this tool to WinGet, but right now I have to do it the old fashioned way. Because this is a file downloaded from GitHub to Windows Server 25, I need to configure some settings to allow the file to execute and to reassure the operating system that the file isn't malware. OpenWeb UI does a whole lot of complicated things with Python and the AI system installer app on the screen simplifies this so you don't spend nearly as much time shouting profanity at the command prompt. Once you get the dialog box up, click install under Open Web UI. This installation process can take a while. So if you are doing it yourself, go grab yourself your beverage of choice and come back to the server when it is finished. Once you've completed the installation, you can click Start Open Web UI, which will spin up the Open UI web server and point Microsoft Edge at the website. In later videos, I'll show you how you can have other computers on your network interact with Olama with Open Web UI over the network. As I haven't run this before, I'm asked to create an admin account. We will explore accounts and permissions in later videos. Now that Open Web UI is up and connected to the Olama instance, I'm going to acquire an LLM from Olama, against which I can run chat queries. Olama has a whole catalogue of LLMs available, but as I'm using Microsoft stuff, I'll use Microsoft's FI model for this example. I click my account, choose Settings, select Admin Settings, select Models, and click the Download button. There isn't a model browser built in at the moment, so you have to know the name of the model which you can find from the Olama site. There is a link to the site on this dialog. Here I type Phi4, and the large language model is downloaded from the internet. A key to loading models is the amount of RAM that the Olama host has. Phi4 is a smaller model, so works fine in the 32 gig I've allocated to this virtual machine. I close the dialog and return to the main blade. I can see that Phi4 is loaded as the large language model. I enter a query related to the first five prime numbers and the LLM returns the answer. It takes a little longer than with a paid for LLM service, but given the minimal resources I allocated to the VM, it's an adequate proof of concept. In the next video in this series, I'll go through how to make this Olama on Windows Server available to other hosts on your local area network and how users can start interacting with local files and organizational data. There are other projects such as LM Studio that wrap this all in a nice interface as well. And if there is interest, we may cover those in later videos. Thanks for hanging around to the end of this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.